Our main thrust here, Rethinking Vehicles First, is to look at Hong Kong's de facto vehicle first policy, which is something that's just arisen. It doesn't seem to have any brain behind it. So we are looking at that from two angles. We're looking at um, things like parking and enforcement, which is a way that we can um, control the number of cars. And we're also looking at public space, which is very important. And we've got some excellent speakers lined up for that. Yeah. Um, I want to, I'm James, I'm the editor of Transit Jam. I'm with Waltrout yeah. Ritter, who's our program uh, content uh, director. Um, and we are in the Borough Happold offices in Wan Chai. So thanks to Borough Happold for hosting us here. I uh, just want to say that we invited Peter Dampier of uh, Borough Happold to speak as our keynote speaker before they offered us the office. Um, we cannot be bought here at Transit Jam. Many have tried. Um, so everyone's here on merit and uh, Peter is kicking us off with really a fantastic uh, idea and a vision really for how public space could be used in Hong Kong. So with that, I think I will pass over to the first session and that is to Peter. Thank you, James. Um, full screen. Right. Okay. Well, um, Hong Kong has arguably got one of the best public transport um, systems in the world, integrated with um, MTR um, buses, the trams, the ferries. Um, yet walking in Hong Kong um, isn't as easy as it, it could be. Um, priority is given to the 10% of the population um, who own vehicles. Um, means at grade walking is um, with density um, and um, pedestrian barriers, illegal parking, deliveries, small pavement sizes, um, obstructions, etc., um, and excessive urban traffic speed, um, lack of strategic car um, demand management policies, um, all add to an urban heat canyon effect, air quality, um, making it challenging, uncomfortable, and at times unpleasant to say the least. Um, if you add to that the lack of quality urban public space um, to sit, relax, read and enjoy makes Hong Kong um, quite a hostile pedestrian environment. Um, so we actually came up with a, um, an idea and it was the frustration of um, those aspects that drove me to this idea which um, originally came from my own sort of journey walking from Wan Chai to um, the, the central ferry piers um, and after discussion with various people um, we formed a, a team the Wan Chai Connect Design Group um, listed there I won't um, read the slide to you um, and formulated an idea which was born predominantly around connectivity at the time but also um, then morphed into the the ability to actually create public space by holistic thinking um, so I'm just going to briefly run through obviously I've done this presentation a number of times we presented to Wan Chai District Council, to uh, the Hong Kong Trade Development Council um, and to the Harbour Front Commission informally, waiting for a formal um, um, audience, um, who've all been very positive about um, the ideas that we've come up with. So why? So if we look at the reclamation in Wan Chai and um, the old coastline, um, the sort of urban grain in 1904 was around pedestrian and around sort of horse and car in effect but as the reclamation continued um, you know and the birth of the vehicle um, moved forward we ended up with sort of greater and greater um, chasms till we ended up with in essence a scar um, that cuts the throat of two distinct parts of Wan Chai you can't get across that you can only go over it that is going to be um, I suppose infused further with the um, opening of the exhibition station which is the in effect the wrong side of Wan Chai um, creating more um, can you start your video do we start it okay um, sorry creating more um, pedestrian traffic going the other way and the only viable route at the moment is the famous O'Brien walkway so you've got a broken um, fragmented approach there there's only one route from Wan Chai um, across to the harbour. No, not on that. Um, and um, that's the sort of uh, approach at the moment. You've got sort of, you know, if you're trying to get from Wan Chai Ferry to Pacific Place, it's a, it's a bit of a nightmare. 
So the opportunity, um, that was the idea by looking along Gloucester Road about putting a, a platform across the top and linking them up. But the real uh, catalyst for this was then the announcement from the government that they were going to sell the um, Immigration Tower, Wan Chai Tower and the Revenue Tower site. That's front and centre to the problem of Wan Chai and therefore we wanted to get in front of this um, development and spark some debate and um, give people something to think about. Not unlike um, a similar thing we did with Site 3 um, with um, Benoit, which is, is the government has taken on board and that's going to be a design and price um, sale. So moving on, the government have basically intimated there'll be a few, um, a new extension to the conference centre, a hotel, improved connectivity, but they haven't said what. Um, but they have actually start, mentioned recently about linking a, a bridge to the harbour, which um, is piecemeal because it only links the Hyatt Garden to the waterfront. It doesn't deal with the major problem, which is Gloucester Road. Government policy is about livability, people-centric, better public spaces, walkability. So we felt we were on the right track. So the real opportunity is the future of Wan Chai. Um, you know, it's very well known, um, Jan Geller's statement about um, first life in spaces, etc. Um, getting that right is, is, is in principle why we've, we've started this long before. The so the solution. Um, the High Line is something that um, I know um, James noted in, um, in, the, in an interview he did with um, ourselves on this. And um, it isn't easy replicated, but we feel, it says at the bottom there, it's book, build a call part and connect it to a framework. We feel that the framework is very much this. So actually it's talk, looking at desire lines, it's an elevated approach that deals with the problem that, let's face it, um, they're not going to take the barriers down, you're not going to have pedestrianisation, they've been trying in Devoe Road for 17 years. So the only way to deal with this is to actually take it at face value and create something unique that floats above. Um, and provides that connectivity, linking the MTR stations, the new MTR stations, and the desire lines to the harbour. So in essence, you've got um, four spikes coming back into Wan Chai to sort of Johnson Road. You've got a linear park floating above Gloucester Road, which um, doesn't, it isn't a thick concrete um, you know, structure across the entire Gloucester Road with a dark, dingy thing underneath. It's, it's been looked at in, in that approach to actually have probably 60, only 60% 60 of it covered um, and then out to the harbour but also as part of that a, a new tower and landmark in Wan Chai to actually triangulate it with IFC and ICC so in effect rejuvenating um, the area. So there's an aerial view of it, a garden gateway, the two links going out, a grand new entrance to the exhibition centre um, which you go under, an amphitheatre on the top, so you've got a play place that you can actually um, congregate and enjoy um, across there. And again, the legs going out through the Hyatt Garden. A, a view, which I know I've, I've put this out on social media, so I'm sure many people have seen this, but creating something out of nothing. Uh, a linear park for citizens and um, you know tourists to enjoy alike. Vitality, cafe culture, um, landscaped um, bridges rather than the O'Brien, um, let's face it, it's a monstrosity in, in effect. Um, and then a link there, there's a, you know, potentially putting some F&B on the harbour. There's the bridge going back into um, um, the Wan Chai redevelopment. And then the grand new entrance with the amphitheatre. Um, benefits, obviously, we go through all of those, but we're looking at cultural, tourism, livability, health and well-being, um, social, environmental, society, connection, environmentally friendly, health and well-being, the cost of value, um, the value of the site, the site development, and we feel this is an opportunity for the government, rather than private developers, to actually um, do this at the outset, make the site more attractive, and they would recoup the, the cost of this through the increased premium on the sale of the site. There you go, sorry, I even ran over on the, I'm the first speaker, not a good mark. Okay, Thank no, you, only a second, it's great. So if anyone wants to ask any questions, we're using Slidoo or you can use the Q&A in Zoom. If you wanna use Slidoo, just go to slidoo.com 
enter 852-888 and then you can ask us questions. So thank you very much for that, Peter. And now we have Oren, uh, Oren Thatcher, who's the principal at OTC Planning and Design. And I'm just going to unmute Oren. And there he goes. Unmute. Can you hear? I'm yes, we can hear you. Okay, is my screen shared? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, I'll try to stick to my uh, time frame. I don't know, I'm hearing this echo. I hope everybody else can hear me fine. So um, I want to talk briefly about um, uh, the topic is improving MTR isochrones. And I think uh, I need to start by explaining to those who don't know maybe what isochrones are. So uh, very simplistic, this is from a, an online app that, that looks at it um, um, in the context of public transport in different cities. This is an example from Berlin. This is basically a map that shows, given a, a particular starting point, how far can you get in Berlin within 10 minutes, assuming a combination of mostly public transport, but also a bit of walking. Um, um, and, and as you can see in this case, when you start from a very well connected node, which in this case is the Hauptbahnhof in Berlin, you can get to many places within 10 minutes. You're a bit, uh, it's a bit less so if you're somewhere in the middle of a Tiergarten when you're, when you're away from any nearby transit stop. And so really the destinations you can get to are just around those station areas. Uh, we looked uh, kind of related to it. Uh, we looked uh, some time back at um, uh, uh, how does Hong Kong compare to other cities in terms of uh, in, 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 in an overall journey that people take on uh, public transport, how much of it is walking relative to riding, let's say the train, the MTR in the case of Hong Kong or the bus. And we found that uh, it was not, not a very scientific, we compared it to New York and, and Paris and, and, and other places, Mexico City. And we found that um, in Hong Kong, the equation between walk, wait, transit and walk um, is uh, uh, by a significant margin in Hong Kong, the walking part is the shortest compared to the total commute time. And the reason is that uh, in Hong Kong, uh, partly because our pedestrian environment is so poor, um, we're never actually very far from public transportation. But in the case of Hong Kong, much of that is picked up by buses and minibuses. Uh, if, you, if we did the same exercise just on MTR, the result would be much poorer with a lot more walking and uh, quite uncomfortable walking. So with that, we try to do a, a little a hypothetical study of uh, how can you improve um, uh, or shorten or improve the experience of walking to the nearest MTR stop and through that reducing or, or, or I would say uh, increasing the isochrones uh, uh, of the MTR network in the sense that uh, you could reach farther by just taking the MTR because the walking from the MTR station would improve. Um, the, the premise of this, and I won't get into details, is, is the question of uh, what is a walking experience and how does the level of service of walking as related to space, to uh, um, um, uh, slopes, to weather conditions, uh, reduces or increases the walking speed and therefore shrinks the isochromes. Again, I'm sorry if I'm walking, if I'm going fast on this, but uh, hopefully some people are keeping up with me. We have our own metrics for level of service uh, to do with um, weather protection, uh, cross flows, amount of space available, obviously. Uh, I won't get into that in great detail, but what we did is we, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna skip to, to, the, to the finding. So we took a hypothetical case of uh, Sain Pun Station, and this is a, a bit of a post rationalization uh, to the, what uh, obviously exists there, which is, uh, as you will see, kind of uh, more or less related to the escalator link uh, along the center street. But as a hypothetical exercise, if you look at Sain Pun Station, which is here in the middle, and then you look at the MTR uh, entrances to Sain Pun Station, um, if you look, and then you pick just uh, one entrance, which is the one on uh, uh, Second Street, or maybe it's uh, First Street, uh, I think it's First Street. Um, the, the theory of uh, access to public transport or to MTR stations at the metro stations is there is kind of a six minute walk catchment area. There are different variations to that. Some, uh, obviously some places use 300 meters and so on. But if you just take a radius of with the hypothetical walking distance or six minute catchment in this particular case, you will get a perfect radius, which of course is not the case. 
So when you account uh, for block structure, you get something that's obviously much reduced because it's about um, actual, the actual time it takes to uh, uh, reach, uh, the actual distance you can reach within six minutes, given the block structure. Um, again, in this case, assuming that the streets are all equally accessible and, and you just walk um, uh, at your regular speed and this is how far you can reach. Um, things shrink further when you start accounting for slope. So in the case of Hong Kong, of course, it's very important. So suddenly that isochron, the six minute isochron, uh, shrinks further. And then if you look at street crossings, very important because in Hong Kong, sometimes you have to cross very wide streets, not just in Hong Kong, um, with um, uh, wait times for traffic lights to change and so on, the isochron shrinks even further. Then uh, you look at level of service on the street. In this case, kind of strictly speaking, the amount of space available on the street. And, and again, um, uh, if you consider that that means that it slows you down, um, um, you know, that your, your walking speed is reduced, the isochron, uh, isochron shrinks even further. So what, where we end up, if you can see the dotted line is where we started, or what well, we started with the radius, and then increasingly our isochron, our six minute isochron of walking from the station has shrunk. Then you look at where you're trying to get to. And this is again an illustration of density. And the question is, okay, we want to increase the catchment area by extending the isochron, the six minute isochron, but where is my money best spent? And in this case, you can see that the highest density of uh, uh, destinations, origin destination is uphill. And so that kind of suggests to you where is best to spend your money in order to improve the, the uh, access to the station and therefore extend the isochron. You can look at different ways of doing it. And again, we know what ended up uh, happening uh, with this particular MTR station, which is a bit of a mix of, of tunnels to reach, to reach uphill and an escalator link. And, and what you see is by building this escalator link, at least in theory, you added this little piece to the isochron. So um, again, this is a bit of a uh, kind of a study that's post-rationalization, but it goes to show how uh, you, be you can begin to prioritize um, investment in improvement in pedestrian uh, uh, infrastructure through improving the quality of the pedestrian experience in a way that increases the catchment of an MTR station in this particular case. Thank you. I hope I didn't uh, really overextend my, or go beyond my time too much. Thank you, Owen. That's uh, perfect, perfect timing. And I live uh, Saing Pun right uh, well, uh, in the middle of that isochromes you were just uh, showing. The extension <laughs> or the base? Um, Bonham Road. So just by, uh, so I was in it, I was in the circle and then not in the, uh, the extended. Okay. But it's interesting, we use that uh, MTR station actually as a shortcut down to Sun Yat Sen Park because you can go then in the lifts and through the air conditioning and come out almost by the coast. So do you add the MTR station itself and those long tunnels into your calculations? That, that, that's right. Uh, but but, but, it, but by the way, it's, it's quite interesting because uh, that MTR station, as well as the one in uh, Hong Kong U, changed the... It, this whole approach of uh, isochrones and, and general improving pedestrian improvement is, of course, unrelated to the MTR. But it's interesting how the introduction of those two MTR stations changed the overall mapping of pedestrian connectivity in the area because a lot of people do what you do, which is use them as shortcuts. Okay, so how, uh, how, hang on a sec, sorry, we're not uh, visible. How visible, how much, how manual is this process of, of doing the isochromes there? Is it, is, are you using sort of GAS or something like that? Or do you have to go out on the street and walk up these slopes yourselves? Uh, in this case, it was uh, uh, manual, so it was done as an illustration. We have some parts of our level of service assessment. Uh, we do have actually um, software that does it. Uh, but in this particular case, getting the data into the software and then calculating the isochrones would have been so, would be more time consuming than actually doing it manually through, you know, basically. Right. Okay, and Peter, yeah. do you have any uh, you have any uh, comments on this? Is this something we could apply to the Wan Chai Connect? That's well, I mean, we've we've done a lot of uh, work that I wasn't able to show, and actually, we um, you know looked at the catchment area. We've done the sort of um, a four hundred meter grid around it, etc. Looked at the sphere of influence um, in terms of um, you know we know the MTR 
in, um, you know, requirements in terms of sort of a new station, etc. But it was more about the business, um, the impact. You know, that at the moment you would just jump in a taxi to go somewhere, whereas actually, if you were just out of this, you would just literally get on the land chai, um, you know, connect and, and walk through. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's very related to to that. But we looked at it from a more from a social uh, economic impact yeah. uh, influence. Um, but rather than sort of popula population, we obviously looked at the population of Wan Chai as well. Mm. Um, but it was really about, you know, it was interesting actually, Oren, in your presentation talking about sort of the travel times, because um, I became the, uh, the fool that did it and tried to walk from Pacific Place. Um, and then through our people um, flow, people, we looked at, you know, average walking rates if there was n nothing in the way. And we looked at a 30% improvement in a time to walk from Pacific Place to the Wan Chai Ferry. Um, if the you know the Wan Chai um, connect was in place, mm. you know you know Peter, I have to say that I have a, as you were making your presentation, uh, I I almost laughed because um, a few years ago I made a presentation was exactly about the route this route that you just described. Uh, uh, the presentation I gave was in the convention center, and I said, how would I get from here to Pacific Place? And uh, I I plotted the possible routes, and there weren't that that many. It was about, in that particular case, it was an issue about the limited choices, but also yeah. how tortured it was. I said, in both cities, this would be a no-brainer, that this is something you do, you walk. And in the case of one Chai North to Pacific Place, uh, yeah, you just hop in a taxi or, or, or you know, cross past the road and get on the one or four bus or something. But, but it's, it's, yeah, the pedestrian option is fun. Uh, yeah, it's it's been, exactly the... Yeah. It's similar to the, the Hong Kong Arts Centre. Um, you know, if you go on their website, it says, oh, um, go to Wan Chai Station. <laughs> but if you come out of Wan Chai, unless you know where you're going, yeah. you haven't got a clue how to find the Arts Centre on the other side of Lost the Road. Yeah. We, we're, we're running a bit short on time, but perhaps uh, 30 seconds uh, from each of you on this idea of the two envelope um, bidding scheme, which the government's going to propose for the, for the new site down by the harbour. You know, is the, is the two envelope system something that we could get these isochromes or these sort of new ideas into? Yeah, very much so. I mean, we were um, you know, very much part of Site 3 mm -hmm. um, and um, again started a debate with um, Benoit to try and sort of move that forward and look at it from a perspective of um, creating value for the you know, societal value rather than it just being seen as a, a trophy site that was bought. Um, you know, it should be like circular keep. Um, in you know Sydney, it should be vibrant, and you know you go down Hong Kong Harbour, and it's 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 very underutilised yeah. in terms of enjoyment. Okay, uh, actually, I, 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 I'll ask you. Frank, I yeah, for me, the the main issue with site three is, uh, or the main question is, how is the brief going to be written? Two envelopes is good, but it's all about uh, how is the first envelope going to be evaluated according to which criteria, and who's going to do the evaluation. Yeah. That I have to say, I'm a bit disheartened to learn that um, uh, going to be judged by government only at least last time I heard. Uh, I would have hoped to see international experts um, and and more a kind of transparent set of criteria to ensure that that envelope uh, uh, rules the results. Uh, hopefully, but yeah. maybe it will. Okay, we, we actually really short on time. We've got some good questions coming, though. Um, perhaps we'll ask those uh, towards, the, uh, towards the break, see how we're doing for time. But we had some good questions coming from the, uh, from the, from the audience, so um, we'll ask those perhaps on chat later and put those, put those up. So now, uh, thank you, Oren, and thank you, Peter. We have to move on to the next session. Our time is very tight, okay. I'm afraid. Uh, thanks very much for your interesting chat.